All right, how's it going, everybody? Welcome back to another Saturday. My name is Felix. I'm also known as the Asian Goalie. You're currently tuning in for the Asian Goalie Show. The mission of this show is to create the most impactful platform for beer league goalies to learn, share, and collaborate. This Twitch channel that you're looking at right now is the one and only live channel where I collaborate with others and have live interactions with all of you. If you don't want to miss any future live experience, consider clicking that follow button right there. Um, if you watch this from, you know, from YouTube, don't forget to click on the subscribe button as well if you haven't done so. So today, the second episode of the theme, the story behind the Go Cam, where I invite beer league goalie YouTubers on this show to share the journey being a video content creator while they're playing on the ice. So our guest today, we have Mike, also known as the Odish goalie. And unlike other goalies that I've invited to the show, he has only played beer leagues under two years. But he is no stranger in the beer league goalie YouTube community with almost a thousand subscribers. He's getting there. So before I introduce him to the show, just a reminder, this is an ask me anything environment, meaning that you are part of the show. If you have any comments, questions that you would like me to address, type in the chat, let me know, let us know. We'll make sure that we'll address that in this show, especially today. We're going to share something really cool because we're going to talk about how we take videos as beer league goalies. It's going to be very, very exciting. So, oh man, thank you so much for coming. Like everybody look at that background right there. That's, <laughs> that's dedication. That's preparation. That's something means that, Hey, he's serious about sharing something to us today. Welcome to the show. Really appreciate it. Thanks. This is just my workshop. So <laughs> not a big deal. <laughs> no, I, I really like the, well, I really like the jerseys that you have in the back. I, it's so simple and yet it's just so oh, eye catching. It, is that a, a design that from, from the team that you used to have, or you like, you guys made a new yeah. jersey when you joined the team? Uh, I just happened to start with them the year that they had a new jersey. So, yep. Ah, nice, I think nice. a friend of theirs that was a graphic designer, they made the logo to make it more <laughs> hockey than uh, than dodgeball. But <laughs> <laughs> I like I like the color combination, the the yellow and the red. It it's just so eye catching. At the same time, it's just like oh, I can recognize this team right away <laughs> if I'm on the ice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so yeah, I think my uh, first thought I, was uh, red and red and yellow was ketchup and mustard, but uh, <laughs> but I like <laughs> I it see. too. Yeah, nice. So I want to start off with the first question, Mike. Is how did you get started with playing beer league hockey? Well, I've always been into hockey since my early teens. Um, I grew up in an area on the water, so winter time was always skating, but never played anything organized until. Uh, the last couple of years. Um, I guess the genesis of me playing now uh, started from a promotion at work to where I went from the shop floor working in an office. So I had to find something to stay in shape. And I figured, hey, I love hockey. Why not? Right, right. And uh, like just, just when it comes down to starting to play, like I'm sure there are a lot of years that you want to play. Why at this time when you when you when you started this? Um. I guess, I mean, I did play through my, you know, late teens and early 20s, but at forward and usually just with friends at like a pickup game. Um, right. But for me now, you know, being a bit older, having a little more disposable income, it was a little easier to uh, take the plunge being a goalie because it's not cheap, as you, you're well aware of. And I sure, I'm sure most of our watchers right now know that too. Yeah. Do you, do any of your family members worried about you getting into this goalie position or ice hockey position that? at your age like would that be like wow you're so crazy like you're starting this to do this no i mean my my wife i'm sure she worries about injury and that kind of thing but she's very supportive and she knows that i love it um other than that like my sister and brother-in-law they both know how much i love hockey too so they were very supportive and and i had no problems with it so yeah okay that's good that's good so well, you have been playing because that's that's definitely one of the things that I my parents are always worried about. Like, 
I think it's more coming from they don't really know about the sports a lot. But seems like you you grew up watching hockey. It's like you you guys pretty are pretty soaked into the culture of hockey, anyways. Mm -hmm. Got it. Yeah, for Got sure. It. Yeah, here in the Detroit area, hockey's pretty big. So, mm -hmm. and um, so like for for some of some of the people might not might or might not know, you're also a fellow Asian goalie as well, and. Yep. I th I think that's something that I I will always ask the questions about this is, do you find that being an Asian goalie you felt like a minority or do you felt like you're you're unique in some way like what do you feel you being an Asian goalie does that affect you in any way? When For me, not at goalie? all. I think with the hockey community, it really doesn't matter what you are. I think it's all inclusive. At the end of the day, it's just you know getting on the ice and playing. So I've never had any kind of. Uh, any issues with that kind of thing now even Going being back... five foot six <laughs> being a shorter guy <laughs> yeah i mean that's that's another thing too right like another myth i i heard is like oh you like i mean that's at least people t telling me like oh yeah you're so tall of course like you can't you can play this but i honestly i don't think i'm that tall but well, how tall I'm are you myself, i'm five eleven okay i'm almost six feet that's, but i'm like that's tall average. in my book <laughs> yeah it's it's pretty tall but I know I still know that there are people saying that you have to be really tall to play hockey and you know you have to be good but I personally I think it helps, agree I, but it, it can help but yeah yeah I but the other thing about shorter of... hockey players is their center of gravity is lower so it's a little easier for them to stay balanced yes I agree I agree I agree and I I trained with um, uh, the, my very first guest to the show uh, uh, the tiny tendy, right? Julie, she is actually quite. Uh, she's mm -hmm. even even smaller than you. Like she's only five five foot two, and oh man, like the dedication that she had, the way she trained herself, it's just. I I could probably say he's she's more better than I do in terms of positioning, skating, and all that. So it's, you know, it's yeah, it's a disadvantage, but it doesn't mean that you can't be good, in terms of whether you're, you're tall or small. And, uh, yeah, I saw her latest video on her uh, synthetic ice. She's getting fast. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> she is. Yeah, she's trying to convince me to to actually buy one of those those tiles so that I could actually train myself too. And she's, she's such a such such a great lady too. Like she's inspiration of a lot of people, um, not only just doing herself, but trying to encourage others for sure. Yeah, yeah. So what makes you really want to be part of the like being a goalie like what really attracts you on that like you used to play a lot forward and now you kind of come back to to play goalie i've always been a bit of a gear nut i think the goalie equipment was just so cool looking like ever since i was a kid that was kind of the first thing that attracted me to it was um mm. just seeing the seeing the guys back in that day with all the equipment on it was like wow like just kind of blew my mind <laughs> I just got a comment saying here, Mike, better not drink too much before our game tonight. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's from M. Faye. I'm not sure if, if you oh, recognize yep. his name. Yeah. That's Mark. <laughs> yeah. But uh, looking That's at our... your helmet, like what you're showing there, I can definitely tell you're you're quite a freak. And for those of you who have not seen any of of uh, the oldest goalies uh, YouTube uh, videos, you guys definitely have to check them out because, like, he's showing his helmet, how he chose his helmet, and now he also have a video on how he makes this go cam that he has, the little like neck cam that right beside him. Do you mind showing us a little bit of a giving us a little bit of a demo how how you set it up, how you how you get get that working? Yeah, sure. So, uh, should I move a little bit a little bit closer? I think it's uh yeah it's, okay, it's all right like yeah, okay. it's not it's not that bad yeah. So the side flaps are actually part of my goalie pads. They're the knee protectors from the outside, nice. and I used them just because they already had Velcro on them, so they would stay nice, <laughs> nice. and closed. Um, but on the inside, there's a um, voice recorder ah. that goes to um, just a mini shotgun mic at the bottom, because I found Got that. It. The audio from the GoPro on the inside of the case just didn't work. Um, yeah. Sounded muffled and all echoey. Yes, yes. Um, and then to run the GoPro, because this is an older GoPro, it's a Hero 3 Plus. 
um, I have a battery bank up here so that I can turn it on like a half hour, 45 minutes before a game and still have yeah. plenty of battery, plenty of battery life to make it through a whole game. Um, and I guess on the back side, just got the old leather straps that go around the center post. So I put this up before a game and pretty much forget about it. Do you have one of these or do you have two of these? Because I saw you have like gold cams on, on, on post size, right? Uh, for this, just the one. I put it in the net okay. that I start in. So it's there for, for the first and third period on me. And second period, it gets the other goalie. Nice. But uh, nice. for the, the glass cams, I have two on the outside. Right. So you have two on the glasses and one box on the... And then you have one on the helmet too, right? <laughs> yep, yep. One on the helmet and then um, a teammate, well, two teammates actually bring their GoPros also. So there's one as a bench cam and one of them wears it on his helmet. That's Gordy. He's I, the captain. The guy that I runs always the felt like like you probably have better coverage than surveys camera in a normal apartment building here in Vancouver. <laughs> <laughs> you guys like cover all kinds of angles. I'm like, what the? <laughs> like, you know what though? I still lose footage so in the fun. corners. That's still one yeah. thing that like I, I'm trying to work on. So, <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> um, I'm I'm curious because you have the you have the recorder on the go uh, cam on the go cam box there. Is it because you get better voice there versus the the one you have on your body? No, it's Why more for like one there? it's more for ambient audio like of the game. It oh, catches better okay. better noise of you know the puck and the sticks and skates. Um, but for my voice, it's just the one that I have on my chest protector. Damn, this 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 is the you know the the perfectionist. I like that. I like that <laughs> line. Like you need to catch the right noise on the on the eyes. Oh my god! Like I would never <laughs> think that like to that to that extreme. But I I really really respect that because like that really shows the passion that you have in Thanks. making things perfect and. So what 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 are your plan to add more angles? Like you have you said you say you have one in the corner and and where else? <laughs> well, I um I did try Nick the goalie put out a challenge um mm. for me to try to do an over. Oh camera. yeah, the, so the, I did the... um with the light stand. Yep, and that one catches the corners, but that's the the problem is um the netting that gets put up. You know, it's it's you can see that because there's no way to get it around the other side of it. Right. Um, right so right. I guess I could use that sparingly. Uh, the last couple games, I haven't brought that with me because I'm already carrying so much gear. Like when I when I go to load everything up, I'm like, eh, I think I'm gonna leave that tonight. So because it hasn't made it into a video yet, I haven't caught up yet to when I was starting to to bring that one. But I might change I, I my mind kind of... when I get to that footage. <laughs> I have a comment saying locker room cam is next. I agree. I agree. <laughs> locker room cam, yes, but but not with like naked people. But like as long as it's like. You know, and <laughs> uh, child. Uh, I mean, at least people friendly. I think. I think those yeah. are good, like those kind of conversation. I agree. Like, if you have great conversation there, um, it's it's great to show in the beginning. That, and yeah, that'd be up to the yeah. teammates because I have a couple little <laughs> clips here and there of like you know right, right. stuff in the locker room. I think one of them was uh, a couple teammates did a straight arm challenge. I don't know if you know what that is. You hold a beer yeah. with your arm straight out and lift it overhead. Yeah. So ah uh, okay that made okay. that made one of the videos at the end so <laughs> right 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 yeah for sure I I kind of want to bring back a little bit from when you started because I think this this would be a really great kind of understanding from people who are consider taking videos in in YouTube what where did you start like I'm sure you didn't start off with fucking like <laughs> five six cameras at at no, once no. like wh where were you when you first started. Uh, when I first started, I only had this GoPro, the Hero Three, um, mm -hmm. Hero Three Plus. So that's it's like a almost a ten year old camera now, I think, maybe mm, yeah. close to ten years yeah. old. Hero but yeah, I just had yeah. the one camera, and I would uh, I would just clip it in inside of you know the goal, and then I also had a suction cup. So I I was trying both, you know, on the glass from the inside and in the can or uh, in the net. Um, I just found that my camera was getting hit too often because I was a horrible goalie <laughs> and I couldn't stop <laughs> anything. So that was kind of where I decided to build this box. And then after that, slowly between then and now, I just added more cameras here and there. Um, but initially it was really just to see what I was doing. Um, I, I really didn't have any plans of making a channel at all to start. Mm. It was just to see the things that I was doing wrong in order to correct them. And um, it just kind of slowly 
turned into a YouTube channel. <laughs> At what point do you think it started to get traction from people? Like, is it you post certain um, type I, of content or? I kind of know the exact day. Um, I got mentioned on um, Wayne, the voiceover goalie. He did a he did a video about I think it was five smaller YouTube channels that he watches and it right. just kind of exploded because I think before that I maybe had three two to three hundred subscribers and uh, right. like in the period of like twenty four or forty eight hours it it doubled so what have you done differently since you started like do you like in terms of the the mindset in terms of how he set up like what what kind of learnings that you had since you started well um i've always been like an early arriver at the rank but i would look i can't show up any later than an hour before game just to get everything set up and to have time for me to get dressed and and get warmed up and everything but um I don't, I don't think much has changed, but I know as far as like the way I make videos, it seems it changes every video where I'll figure something out to make something quicker. Um, yeah. And it seems like every time I do that, it's like, oh, well, now I can add this other thing that I've wanted to do. So it seems like the time that it takes me to make a video, it's never going to go down like a lot because every time I get quicker at one thing, I, I add two more. So, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a learning process, and I, I think I agree with that a lot, is you have to kind of get started with some basic stuff before you start to kind of, like, I start to see that trend with everybody who, who started as a YouTuber or started to create video content. It's like, you can't get to a perfect state until you do one, and then improve a little bit on number two, improve a little bit on number three. That's exactly what I do on my videos. Um, yep, yep. Just the Asian goalie show, for example, when I first started, I just like, okay, just one angle, just side by side, and that's it. Now I have like, I have a camera here, I have a camera there, I have, like, I even asked yourself if you can take another angle there, because I feel like usually um, the guests I have through Zoom, they have a lot of video compression, right? The quality might not be as good. So, hey, might as well just get that, but that didn't happen, which, which is fine, that's fine, but having that kind of mindset of getting improved over time i think that's that happens to every single youtubers i i almost chat with yeah well there's a saying in photography the best camera is the one you have so you right. just kind of have to start with what you've got and and that's the thing is just getting started you know because I, I know a few people that are like on that edge of like starting a channel and it's like don't wait just you know start with what you've got and and go from there it doesn't have to be perfect i mean like you what said, is your you start... unique kind of thoughts when it comes down to starting your channel? It's like you did talk about a little bit of, oh, I just want to see how I play, but is there anything more that you want to kind of show in your YouTube channel? Like we were talking about before, um, I wish I had done more when I was like in my really green phase of like starting to get back into it. Um, I didn't take as much video and I wasn't doing vlog videos back then either to talk about how I felt and what I was going through. And now not to say that I'm beyond beginner cause I still feel like a beginner, but I'm beyond that, like totally figuring everything out phase, which I feel like would have been more relatable to people that are, you know, thinking about getting into, into the crease. So you do have a very similar kind of thoughts that I had where I think we want to, it's interesting because when I started, I wanted to talk to one crowd where who are the crowd who are not quite the goalies yet. They're kind of thinking about it and I'm kind of pushed them to finish line. Hey, just do this. But I end up figuring out that I attract a lot of existing goalies in here, which is very interesting. Like I, I'm still thinking of how can I spread these words, but after several reflection on this, I felt like it's more of a word of mouth kind of thing, right? Like it's, if if you're a uh, if you're considering, you won't really search about that. It, it must be you must be already someone who started it, and you're like, ah, I want more ideas. How can I do better? Right? It's yeah. always the excitement people. So, or people that played goalie, you know, back in the day and haven't played in a while. That seems to be a lot of my like, especially the people that take the time to comment on my videos. That's mm -hmm. a lot of them. Mm -hmm. Is guys that haven't played in a while and and i love hearing from them when they say like hey i just started playing again and, and it's it's super exciting it is you know? it is yeah 
Um, I like haven't in a perfect got anyone... world. Oh, go ahead. Sorry, I haven't got anyone who who told me that. Hey, you know, you inspired me. But I, I I look forward to that day because it's it's kind of really the the whole meaning of me starting the channel is not just showing who I am, but how how I could inspire others to to actually lift themselves up. Well, well, for me, it was totally unexpected because, like I said. I mean, not to sound selfish, but I started filming really just for myself, just to see, you know, where yeah. I could improve. And I never expected it to turn into something like this, where I occasionally get people saying like, hey, you know, you inspired me to get back on the ice. And I'm like, that's awesome. Like, I think I was 2% of that, like the 98% of it was that person making the decision, but just really humbled and honored when, when I get messages like that. No, I think you're great. Like, this is one of the... I would say it's what I learn is you don't have to be good to inspire people. I, I think there's a there's a misconception that oh you must have been been there first. You have to like get to a certain level before you even share. I, I I disagree. I used to think like that, but I disagree now because it is your raw you that was the one. Because sometimes when you're at a certain level, the way of you think is already very different than. When you first started, so that's why going back to, you know, what I what I what I told Mike earlier to like before we start was that I'm so happy to see him actually documenting this so early in his beer league journey. Yeah, because you had been playing since. Uh, well, how long have you been playing? Is it I have about... been actually since I really started. It was 2015. Okay. But I did stop playing. Like, I I did on and off. For one year or two year in between so I, okay. so it's kind of like i'm into it and then i kind of pull myself out a little bit just subbing in every now and then and and this this year is really this season is really the one that i'm like i'm just gonna get back and like be really serious about it okay because at the end of the day i mean my videos i think yes they're hockey but it's more than that i'm a guy who loved something always wanted to do it and for whatever reasons, I didn't for a long time. And uh, mm. getting back into hockey has been kind of like just a fulfillment of a dream. And I think your dreams are universal. Everybody's got something they've wanted to do. And yes. I would hope that, you know, my videos could be more appealing to people that other other than just hockey people could be everybody. But, um, you know, it's just at the end of the day, it's like if there's something you want to do, just go out and do it. Not to quote Shia LaBeouf, but <laughs> you've seen that meme, when... right? The, the just do it yeah. meme. <laughs> when when you first started getting your gears i know you talk about your equipment uh, freak um how do you balance yourself of getting the, the 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 best gears for yourself versus is that really the right one for you you know you know like when you when you think about buying you're like oh i want to buy the the fanciest you know this one right like when how, how do you come across like choosing your equipment when you first started well, when I first started, it was whatever I could find. Um, I think the very first thing I bought was a pair of used skates that I played against sports that were about three sizes too big. <laughs> so, because um, I had never been on goalie skates before. So that was my first concern was like, can I skate? So I think I got those skates. I went to a few open skates just to see if I could move around. Mm -hmm. And it was very foreign feeling coming from player skates. Um, and as far as pads, I found what I could on eBay, you know, all old, like at least a decade old stuff just to see if I could play before I invested, you know, serious money into it. So I think um, altogether, I maybe spent four or 500 bucks on everything like skates, pads, chest protector, shorts. And even the first helmet I had, I think I found for like, I want to say it was like a hundred bucks or something like that. Hmm. Might not have Is there a go to place that you go thing, for? It, it got the job done. Yeah. Is there a go to place that you find like those equipments that you have for four, four, five hundred? Um, at that time, like I just found everything on eBay. Um, I didn't know on anything eBay. about sideline swap. Maybe that would yeah, be, yeah, yeah. you know, a good spot for people to look. Um, oh, okay. but once I got serious about it, it price tag kind of went out the window and it was like, you know, I'm, I'm going <laughs> to find the stuff that I want. And there's certain areas like um, skates, helmet, and uh, the jock <laughs> that I didn't want to skimp any money on to make sure I was protected. Yeah. What was your journey of buying buying equipments? Like after you get the first set, and then what was the next few ones that you upgraded in order? Uh, the first thing I upgraded was the chest protector. That's the first okay. thing that I bought brand new. 
Um, and then I think, because I didn't buy my, my pads, like my glove blocker and leg pads, I didn't buy those all at once. They were separate. So I think the next mm. thing I bought were the leg pads. Then I eventually got a glove and blocker that matched. Um, and I think the, hel the helmet, I think that was the next big purchase. And slowly, I got a different chest protector since then, so I've bought two. Um, and then just slowly piecing in the little stuff here and there. Would you do any differently in terms of the order of purchase? Because uh, everybody talk about hey, the helmet is the most important thing. And honestly, when I first started, I never thought about it. Like you said, I just get everything <laughs> that I can put on my <laughs> body and just play. But um, yeah, is there I... anything that you would say like, hey, definitely do this first? I don't think... Well, I think if... Um... If anything, I would have bought a pro chesty first because um, the first one that I bought was just a senior, and it was fine mm -hmm. for when I started. But once I got into league play, there were definitely some shots that I would feel, especially in the arms. Right. So that's right, right. really about the only thing that I would do differently. Everything else seemed to work out pretty well. Okay. Yeah, that's that's good to know because I I think that's also something that people might. I don't know those those people who are on the edge, right? They're like, oh, what do I what do I do first? What do I do this? But at the end of the day, just just buy anything that you <laughs> that you need to just get started. And I agree. Like, I think different people have different experience, and it really depends on the level of plays. And that's my first time hearing you know you you think chesty is the most important thing because of the arms. And you know if oh, if you don't say I don't that, necessarily I, I thought. I don't necessarily think it's the most important, but I think for me it was the one piece of gear that like I had issues with. Everything else that ah, I had okay, gotten okay, felt okay. fine. So I think that was the only one that I wasn't quite happy with. And well, obviously gotcha. the skates that were three sizes too big, those got replaced <laughs> pretty quick too. <laughs> yeah. I was surprised you said the chest protector instead of your skate. I'm like, you say it's three yeah. sizes big. How can you even skate? <laughs> oh, ex extra socks. <laughs> extra socks. <laughs> That's not a bad idea. But be wait. So before you start playing beer, like you do know how to skate, right? It's just using oh, the yeah. player skate instead of the goalie yeah. skate. Yeah, actually, my very first pair of skates were figure skates when I was like three, I think. So. <laughs> oh wow, <laughs> that's 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 really interesting. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, I don't know. When I thought about buying gears, I was like, I need to buy something that fits. Like that was my only thoughts i don't care like i i don't really i can't really distinguish what's the difference between the senior and the pro and and this and that i'm like what the heck is this like i just get the cheapest one that fit that was my that was my model so skate i i, I need to buy it new because i i never wear someone others shoes i i, I don't think it would fit me so i'll rather just get a new one and i still end up getting the wrong one to be honest the the first one <laughs> the first pair that i got I still remember it. It was a disaster. Like two years in, I still feel pain every time I play. Like it's 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 kind of rubbing off the side of my foot because I also have a really flat foot. So it, the the profile okay. and all that is not working. And... I don't know if I'm like a weird person, but I've never had skates that were comfortable. I think that's just kind of mm. now. I I've still have yet to buy full custom skates. I don't know maybe if that's what you have to do in order to to not have foot I almost pain. Almost have to. I'm the same way where I have foot pain every skate. Like there's, yeah. it's not as bad as it as, at least the skates I have now. They're not as bad as other skates that I've worn in the past. But I don't think I've ever not by the end of a skate felt some pain. I don't know if that's weird, but it seems to be pretty common for everybody. Yeah, it is common, but I. I'm very glad. I think it's the it's the person who who who, who do the fitting, that that's the most important one. Because the one who did my fitting the first time, now I think about it, he probably doesn't quite know how to do the fitting properly. When I are did you talking like time, the are you talking like the baking of the skate or like actually selecting like like the person? Yeah, both. Like selecting okay. to baking to like really knowing your foot profile and not just the skate, right? It's also the the, the insole that you put in the skate, those kind of things. And I really appreciate the second guy that who did my profile. Like ever since I got my second pair of skate, I never had a problem with getting pain. Oh, never. okay. Like he did a really good job. And uh, I I tried like five or six p different pairs until I find one. And he was like, literally, that was the last one before he was suggesting <laughs> me to do a custom one. 
Okay, I got you. Yeah, and I still pay like a really decent amount of money. Like I pay eight hundred Canadian, so it's almost like six hundred fifty for that pair. I was like, oh my god, my wallet is crying. <laughs> but then, well, hey. after a few games, I'm like, fuck, like I, it's the best investment I've ever made. Well, you're a goalie and a YouTuber, so paying money out of your pocket's got to be familiar. <laughs> <laughs> yes, <laughs> that's that's really true. It's like you know, just getting another camera, just like it, it's it's well, that a, reminds quite me expensive. Of, um... <laughs> what Matt Schnow said in the last pat, uh, you know, he's got golf as his other hobby. I've got woodworking, so it's like every <laughs> hobby I have is super expensive. Like, why can't I just play soccer where you just need shoes and a ball? <laughs> I know, I know, I know. I, I, I think that's really unique about the goalie position is we even have multiple channels, multiple big influencers that just talk about gears. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm not even into that, but I, I, it's, I recognize the trend now. Like, we all have this secret, you know, <laughs> secret thoughts about gears of like fantasizing, like, oh, this is the dream gears that we can get. <laughs> I'm sure you have, like, do you have like So I was going to say, like, you so still... you don't, you don't go on goalie monkey. <laughs> oh, you don't go on goalie monkey and like drool over like the new gear. Oh, I do. <laughs> I, I, I would say this. I, I think I'm, I'm one of the relatively uh practical goalies what i mean by that is i just buy what i need i don't i don't think about too much i do think about it not not entirely but when i see like really nice gears i'm like ah yeah if i got this it would be cool but like i know that i would never spend money on it it's just like it's out of the like it's out of that necessity it's already like a luxury to have like anything to go above the necessity part i would be like no (laughs) probably Probably like I would like I want it, but like I won't buy it kind of thing. <laughs> yeah, well, this thing was uh, a bit of a above and beyond, probably what I needed. But as far as like the head, you only get one brain, so I didn't want to take any chances. So I decided I was going to buy the best thing I could possibly get. So, I I think that's that to me is also an experience, though. Like that to me is like if I were to buy something like this, I would show the experience because it's it's the it's the thought process to buying. It's it's also a satisfaction when you get it. Like it's yeah, yeah. It's the you know it's not about showing off, but like that satisfaction. Of like oh, I I'm finally making a really serious decision on getting committed to this, and you know it it does boost mentally. I think when you get something better. So I I do I do think for people who who loves gears they they have that kind of mindset is i get this i got better mindset wise <laughs> not skill wise yeah now look good play good <laughs> <laughs> exactly um moving on to kind of the your your youtube channel now like you have i believe you have over f- like 40 50 uh f- 30 40 videos on your youtube channel now and I, I can like see yeah i can see kind of the i don't know i i do think that you have so much potential to build more different type of contents uh one is the like you have a big workshop here like i felt like you know i, I feel like i don't know do you have any idea of what type of message that you want to continue spreading on your channel what's what's upcoming um like we were talking about earlier just like you know if you have a dream just go out and do it i guess that's kind of the the subplot of of my channel it's really just been like like you like documenting my journey of you know becoming a goalie and feeling more confident week after week but um hockey has kind of made me a happier person in general like in my day-to-day life you know just getting to do something that i love doing and i enjoy i otherwise i wouldn't be making you know videos if i didn't love what i was doing and i assume it's the same for you um so yeah, I guess that's that's kind of about it. Do you have any next thing you want to add onto your videos? Like I I don't know. Like I, I feel like you're slowly adding. I'm I'm kind of slowly like try to dissect kind of the 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 videos part that you do. And well, video angles is one. You have all kinds of angles. And I think the second part is how you edit it. Right, you start to add a little bit of a, a little. Pl- uh, you know skit on the side it's like hey you know good job right all those kind of things um is there anything you want to keep adding on it how 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 would how do you see yourself improving your video 
Um, as far as the game videos, I'm not really sure. I've gotten to a point where, like, as far as adding, like, the movie clips and stuff, eventually I'm going to run out of good movies to add clips from. So it's <laughs> like, um, eventually, I don't know if, like, people would be upset if I stopped adding video clips. I don't know. I haven't really thought too much about, you know, what to do differently or what to add. I'm kind of still kind of getting in the groove of, you know, like, I, I don't want my videos to feel formulaic to where like, okay, this is one minute in and that happens. And then, cause I think it's really mm. easy to fall into that rut of like, just put pushing out content without caring about it. And um, oh yeah, just going by like, you know, a set of rules and making something. So I don't ever want my videos to feel like that, but I think I'm still kind of getting into the groove of, you know, just making, making fun videos. <laughs> Do you have any suggestions of anything? Like, because I'm always all ears for that kind of stuff. Yeah, yeah. I I think one is if you can like that's something I, I'm also doing. It's thinking of ideas, but it's to collaborate with more people, like any people. It could be, it could be like the settings we just talk, or could be collaborating with YouTubers. Um, but that's kind of where I'm going. Is how can I expand my network? Uh, on the on the beer league community so that uh i could get more ideas because i think it's it's the ideas not coming up from ourselves it's coming up from the audience that we had so mm -hmm. another another way that i would think is have you chat with any of your audience in some way have you engaged with them have you heard anything that they were like hey i want here i want to hear more um not that I can think of. I mean, I, I do engage with the audience, but I can't really think of that many ideas that have sprung up from that. Mostly it's like people like Jack Mirren being, you know, extra supportive. And, yes, um, he's very supportive, yes. Yeah. Um, I think like the Facebook group, some ideas have sprung up from that. And like we've had some discussions about things here and there, like like the idea with the camera on the light stand that, that right, came from right. the Facebook group. Um, yeah. But yeah, other than that, I can't think of anything. Off the I like I like the challenge part. That's that's one of the trend that I saw like a while back, right? Like ice bucket challenge, whatever <laughs> x, x amount of challenge. Everybody do the same thing, right? Maybe we can create like a goalie challenge in some sort and have everybody to do this. Yeah, and that'd be cool. I think I saw something, uh, Magnetic Crease, right? He was sending out a a glove to yep, another yep. goalie and to show up. Like that is a fantastic idea. Like that encourage a lot of the collaborations and you know it drive people to different channels and it yeah just actually each other that way i was the last one to have that glove and i that i that put a video out um the person who has it now still kind of waiting to see what he did with it so uh, oh. <laughs> turbo turbo tendy this is a, a little knock on the door <laughs> i did reach out to him but glove? i never got any anything from him i'm like hey, oh, do okay. you want to go on the show but i never heard her back from him <laughs> yeah we we haven't heard from him in a while so kind of getting Kind of wondering yeah, what's going on. I think he's on. from Canada too, so maybe the yeah, lockdown, yep. the whole thing was. Oh kinda... yeah, that's true. Yeah, I I, I think it does. I, I think I'm kind of one of the the most active Canadian goalies. <laughs> We're trying to do <laughs> stuff while we have nothing to do. <laughs> it's you, you and Trev for Oilers, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh man, I haven't connected with him yet, but that's definitely one of the person I would love to connect with for sure. His channel himself. was one of the things like between him, um, the puck stops here and Wayne, the VO goalie. Like when I first started, those were the three channels that every time they yeah. put up a video, I was just watching them, you know, start to finish. So I actually invited Trav to a wings game. Um, I think it was last winter and he wound uh -huh. up getting snow snowed in and he couldn't make it. Oh. But, uh, <laughs> I chat with him every once in a while. He's a pretty good guy. Nice. Nice. Yeah. Um, who was the other one? Uh, the puck stops here. Is yeah. I I reached out to to him uh, as well, and yeah, I think he started posting videos for a while now. I liked his last videos to talk about how he got trained and all that training stuff. Those yep. are great videos. Like he should do more. Like yeah. if he can. Um, but I, I really haven't think of anyone in my area, at least on the West Coast. <laughs> That's that's does these that does these videos, which is really interesting. I found. Well, hockey's relatively well, at least in America, like um, out in California, it's a more of a. It doesn't have as much of a history as you know up here in the Northeast. I think, like the Mighty Ducks was kind of like the explosion of hockey, like in California. 
Yeah. Yeah. Well, Nick the goalie is on, on the same city side. I, I haven't connected. Oh, that's right. Yet. Oh, yeah, okay. But uh, I, I, I feel like he's a very different type of uh, influencers out there. He's he's more on the on the on the fun side, on the on the very like I don't know how to describe that, but it's on a very like uh, have fun kind of like making making plays and stuff. But he's also a very interesting. Like I haven't really seen him a lot on the beer league kind of settings, but he now you know really growing so much on social media. Yeah. Definitely a certain thing, something that we could learn from him on that one, on that part. Yeah, I've kind, of, I've kind of gotten lazy on the TikTok. I know they talked me into starting a TikTok, but I haven't posted a video in a while. So YouTube's kind of been my thing, and like I put a lot of time into that, so that's kind of what I've been focusing on. It takes time to build, and I think a social media like Instagram and TikTok, it's it, if you want to grow fast, if you want to grow big, you have to be willing to do something that might not be natural to you. Meaning that, like, you might have to do something, like, you have to tailor yourself towards the audience. And I, yeah. I know there's quite a lot of people doesn't like that part of it. Um, so that's why, you know, it's, it's you know, it's, it's, a, it's a spectrum, right? If you want to go more of the popular, get more audience, big crowd, like, you got to do something that catches people's eyes. Like, um, I learn a lot from from the influencers that i work with it's sometimes it's it's really the clickbaity title that that drive people into your channel is not the actual content so it's Tre- like trev trevor oilers <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're Liam there right cough cough <laughs> yeah, yeah totally you, like it's you know it's it, it, do you are we willing are you willing to do that does it do you I, do you want to do I this, share right? I share the opinion that Jack Mirren had talked about on his appearance on uh, Just Your Average Goalies podcast. I don't worry yeah. so much about like am I happy that I have the subscribers I do? Yes. But I don't really I'm not too worried about like huge growth. Like I, mm-hmm. I'm more in it just to like do what I'm doing, have a good time and getting to interact with the people that really care about about the sport. Um, if it, if it ever got like super huge and I wasn't able to interact with everybody that comments, I'd actually feel kind of sad. So mm. him and I are on the same on the same page with that. Mm. Um, mm. If it happens, I'm not going to be upset by any means, but like, <laughs> I would I would try yeah. my hardest to like to be able to talk with everybody. Yeah, so. yeah, that's that's definitely where I'm coming from as well. It's 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 being authentic. It's being who you are. It's being the interactions. I that's the whole reason why I started It's the interaction that I want It's not the the big thing like I want this to be a big thing but I want it to be big and interactive like create a community and all that um, well you want it to be big and it to sustain because there are a lot of things that yes. like pop up that are huge and then three weeks later they're gone so yeah yeah <sighs> that's, I totally that's understand true. that <laughs> yeah that that's that's really true yeah um yeah I've been trying out a lot of like different ideas to get more exposure i think right now my problem for myself is the exposure like how can i just get people tap into the my content and to me i don't expect people would love my content like i i felt like my content is very very niche to a point where only certain people would like it but at least if i can get myself out there for people who are not quite interested but they see like i'm very passionate about this at least they will spread the word to have mm-hmm. people who might want to like my videos to watch more of my videos. And that's kind of my sole goal, sole like single goal that I have right now is how can I expose myself? And like talking to you, talking to a lot of people, that's a way for me to get myself out there because you guys will also promote my channel and all that. And yeah. You know what? At the end of the day, I think it will spin off more ideas by connecting with more people if I can't do it by myself. Yeah, I agree. Okay, so um, we have about 10, 15 minutes. I've I've been staring at your like mass for a long time. (laughs) And I think we need to talk about it. And like, first of all, I want to hear about the design. Like, do you have a specific message on that hat? 
No, I think um, it's the I mean, wings. I failed this. this yeah, it's the Red Wings. Yep, it's actually um, a tribute mask for uh, Mike Vernon. He was the goalie mm. for the Wings in '97 when they won the cup. Um, well, it's the first cup in my lifetime. Um, this was actually my plan B. My first design was more actually Asian inspired. I wanted a big samurai like mask up here. Nice. Um, yeah, that would be. But cool. what I had picked out was so like intricate and like so many small details. <laughs> That yeah. the painter was like, you're going to spend about twice what you spent to have the mask made for a paint job <laughs> like that. So I was like, okay, something simpler and like, well, n- still still kind of intricate, but just two colors. Um, and it, it's like, you can see this design from anywhere on the ice. And I love that. Um, just going with the simple monochrome black and white. Um, the idea behind that was it'll match my pads and match any jersey that I wear with it. So yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, do you have What's any questions the, uh, about anything else about it? Yeah. Was that the paint job? I, like, I, I never, I mean, I never uh, get a custom mask. I never ask about it, but I always think very curious about the the buying process, like from you getting the design to like, like what kind of options you have. Like, I, I like to hear about that. Like, do sure. You have any, um, the, the so when I first there? got in touch with them, um, before yeah. I even went to the shop, they wanted pictures of my head from the front, from the side. Um, took some measurements, and that that got the process started. Uh, but once I went there, they had me try on a bunch of different masks to see what type of shell I would want. And he was kind of sizing up what he would have to do for the padding with my face structure um, from the first visit. Um, as far as options on the mask, um, I went with the titanium cage. That was um, a bit more expensive than the standard. It comes with a just a stainless steel cage. Um, yeah. I know you can get the metal clips if you wanted that can be painted also to match, but I stuck with the plastic ones. Um, I did go with the D3O foam. I don't know if you can see the orange. Yeah, yeah, we do. Yeah. So the D3O goes across the front and up the top. Um, what is the difference? Is it more safe or is it more comfortable or both or both, both? Um, mm-hmm. Well, compared to the other, like I only have one other mask that I wore, like actually on right. the ice, which was like I had said before, a very cheap and older mask. So it's kind of unfair to, like I feel bad saying anything bad about that mask because you know it got it, it got the job done and, and it was fine. Yeah, you're comparing apples but with oranges, is... right? Yeah, it's like filet mignon and Skittles. Like, yeah. <laughs> it's not really much of a much of a comparison. I like them both, but uh... yeah. <laughs> and honestly, yeah. wear, wearing this mask, if I see a shot coming in at my head, I have zero worry. Whereas <laughs> the other one, like when I'd see a puck coming at my head, I would kind of brace, like, oh shit, this is not gonna feel good. Where with this one, it's like I'm kind of curious. I'm like, well, hey, is is this shot finally gonna like actually feel like something? <laughs> <laughs> Not to be morbid That's or funny. you know or anything, but I'm never worried about getting hurt from taking a puck to the head with this mask. So mm-hmm. when I first started, I'm actually very I don't know when I got my first fair first hit on my head, I was shocked. Like I was like, like I don't know how to comprehend that feeling. At the same time, it it like it's it like goes into my ears. Accident. It's like boom. It's like, it's What's like a small like... it's like a small car accident basically <laughs> but at the same time it doesn't really hurt like i only have one mask and i still have that mask um so i am very curious about like i did think about getting a better mask but i don't know what a better means to me i just don't know other than the cosmetic side of things i could like you know um i still remember one game i i think it's like over time and well, my, my positioning wasn't that great at that time, my skating, all that, that. And I was out of position, I was way all the way left. And I know the puck was in the middle, it's about to shoot in my net. I literally go dive. Like, I, I don't even think about using my hand because I was holding my stick and all that. I just like dive and try to like head, head that puck out. I thought I got <laughs> it, but I didn't. Um, but I still remember that moment because it was such a tight game and that was the so time was... when I really embraced using my head <laughs> to try to so make your a brain, save. Your brain went back to your soccer goalie days, didn't it? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> totally. <laughs> yeah, I was I don't know how I pulled that trigger, but although I still went in, but I was like, ah oh, dang, like that was that was close and yeah, I was you know what, after watching your videos on YouTube I did I did have a moment of 
I want to know more about it. And like, I felt like if you tell me more, I might pull a trigger <laughs> to actually get a new one. Yeah, it's never never a bad thing to have a backup too. So the one that you have now, you can just keep that one on the side. So that's what know, I did my, with my... mine. I still, I still have my original. <laughs> It's like the best excuse for us to buy stuff. I felt. Mm -hmm. ah, just, yep. uh, just another backup. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> just, just in yeah, case. In, yeah, just in, <laughs> just in case this the steak break. I'm just gonna bring three. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, I think that's why they yeah. have on. You know, like the if you ever want any custom graphics on your stick, you gotta buy them in a three pack. So. <laughs> <laughs> I want to ask you this question. Uh, sure. I think this is this is something that uh, I always wonder is. You have that many angles and cameras and all that, but how do you how do you prepare your games? Like, how do you prepare every games for the videos that you take to make sure you get all the gears? What 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 do you pack and how do you pack your your, your, your hockey bag? Okay, so um, from the night before a game, I pull every battery out that I've got, get everything charging. Um, then I go through all my memory cards, make sure I don't still have footage on them. So I make sure everything has, you know, been backed up and then I'll format all the cards so that there's, you know, space on all of them. Um, that all gets put in. Um, actually, I can show you the case. Yeah, yeah. Damn. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the case. Suitcase for that. Oop. Love it. So, yeah. Actually, yeah, let's see. Can you see that? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, we've got the two Hero Sevens here, um, the Hero Five, and this little guy has all the cords and such. So I use the suction cup mounts for the glass cams. Right. This one goes on the helmet, and um, these are the batteries that go with the glass cams. So you have a case for that everything. That you oh have yeah. For the for just the video stuff. And did you, yep. did you make the uh, did you make the foam to put those things? Because those look oh yeah custom yeah. I, yep, it came with well the case came with the foam and I special cut it so and actually there's a layer that top layer comes out and then there's just a uh, empty cavity in the bottom for like all the other stuff like <laughs> screwdrivers, scissors, stuff like that. Watch out, video production team! <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> well, that's the thing is walking into the rink with. Not only you know all the camera gear, but all my my hockey stuff too. So, and then any oh, night man. that I buy beer, I'm carrying in like 130 pounds worth of stuff with me every day. <laughs> now you make me want to interview your teammates. <laughs> like, how do you feel about Mike bringing all these stuff? Like, what do? You... <laughs> oh, they love it, man. And they they make suggestions about stuff too, or like ask for, hey, you got to make sure this play makes the video and stuff like that. And I oh, I, I try my best to remember, but it's like right now I'm probably a good what well the, the video that came up today that was from january 9th so i'm pretty far behind so it's hard for me to remember when i get to that game like well somebody wanted to play i gotta try <laughs> to find that and make sure i get it in the video so if it was a right. goal it's easy because those always make always make the video <laughs> do you have anyone help you out with all these like editing versus the, the taking like you do it everything yourself from like beginning to end wow yep. <laughs> wow wow yep. yeah i don't one, know being a video band. edit like creator myself like it's it's a lot of work it's it is and i have people ask me like would you ever want to you know have somebody else edit your videos for you and i'm like not no. really because i don't know if i would trust anybody else to get it the way that i like it so <laughs> same thought <laughs> yeah. i you know what i did try it once and i regret it so bad like, oh, really? I went on Fiverr and tried to get someone to do this. I'm like, okay, it's straightforward enough. I give you all the instructions to do this, to this, 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 and this. They didn't, they didn't deliver on time. They, uh, you know, they did it entirely wrong. I said it's five minutes. They give me one minute. It's like a freaking disaster. The time I give feedback, my, I might as well just use that to, to do it myself. <laughs> <laughs> it was a disaster. Uh, like, I don't know, maybe it's just me, but... Well, I think for what we do, like you can't just have anybody who does video editing because they don't know the hockey side of it. So it's like you're True. asking for somebody that has yeah. knowledge in multiple different things. So yeah. I, I just don't think it would ever be possible. Like it'd be one thing yeah. for um, like somebody who does, you know, like a gaming channel, like video games. Right. That's a common thing. Whereas what we do, it's 
not that common, I guess. I agree. I agree. It's it's neither you get it or you don't get it. It's it's not yeah. something that you can teach. Like you have to you have to do it. You have to see it. You have to. Um, I I try to find the ones who did uh, sports highlights videos. And I try to like, oh cool, like maybe you know some of these. Now, they they don't even bother <laughs> to to listen. They're like, just give me my money. <laughs> I delivered it to you. I'm like, okay, here's your money. <laughs> like, yeah, it's 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 so off that that like they just from they see it as a job versus you seeing it as a passion. It's like yeah, it's a for sure mindset. Yeah. Oh, man, we covered a lot of stuff today, and and Good. yeah, it was fun. I did not expect that. It, we can cover that much in this hour because I, <laughs> I thought you know it's it's gonna take forever for us to cover everything but uh, really appreciate you you jump on do you have yeah. any um, what like what is the I think I asked about the future of the channel but what is the immediate next steps that you have for the channel like do you just want to post more stuff consistently is there any short-term goals that you have for your channel um I know since I started adding like the vlog videos, I know having like consistent ideas is something that's like weighing on my mind because I know I'm already like kind of to the end of my list of ideas. Like my next one hopefully will be an in the bag video, but after that it's like, well, what am I going to do now? So um, I guess kind of to what you had brought up earlier of like collaborating with other people and getting ideas, I guess that's kind of like the next thing. Yeah, because yeah. uh, in the first year that I was making videos, I was doing them once a week, so that was game videos every every week, and that got to be like putting one out every week was like I had zero free time, because aside from mm. you know working a full time job, having a family, um, taking time out you know a couple nights a week to skate, and it's like any other free time I was editing video, so changing to doing game videos every two weeks definitely helped out with that, but now I've gone and said well hey I've got a little bit of extra time to where I could shoot vlog videos because those are quick. Um, I can yeah. do one of those. I can shoot it, edit it, and upload it in one evening. So those are nice. But the game videos are quite the production. <laughs> yeah, for those of you who are currently in the watching this video, like definitely let let us know. Uh, and especially if you have particular ideas for Mike on his YouTube channel, I'm sure uh, you guys can contribute to some of some ideas. Um, for him and for a lot of YouTubers or for yourself to actually get into taking videos as well and uh, yeah so definitely I mean to, to wrap this up I would like to definitely say that if you have not checked out Mike's channel definitely go check out the oldish goalie uh, in YouTube is there a particular handle that you have in YouTube just oldish goalie right yep just oldish goalie and then Instagram is oldish underscore goalie Got I'm it, pretty got sure it. those are the only two. Yep. I just got another comment saying a, a fading montage of him <laughs> and Faye after said that. <laughs> yes. Not a bad idea. <laughs> it's actually great. Like I, I think one of the unique thing that I I would say I'm very jealous about is you have a really great team to support you. Um, yes, that definitely for sure. I would say is it's like they like they're almost into this with you, right? That's yes. that's the yeah. unique part. And I mean I, I couldn't there's get a teammate team in on. the chat, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Yep. <laughs> so like definitely get them involved more uh you know i i think it will be a very good uh extension of all the videos that you have is showing them more and you know interview them yeah yeah hey, well. that's not a I bad idea that would be a very good, good idea too yeah well thanks thanks to everybody who tune in uh um, yeah so thank you for, guys uh yeah, so f go follow Mike for sure. So exclusive content uh, about my beer league goalie journey. You guys can go to my YouTube channel as well. You can find my YouTube channel on the panel. Uh, I will have kind of my own thoughts of showing my game as well. So definitely, uh, we'll appreciate you subscribe that. And again, more comments, more uh, questions, anything you want to hear more about beer league hockey, uh, comment on my videos, or you can actually join my Discord channel. Uh, the Asian goalie community. Uh, this is where I want to get real close uh, interaction with you guys, you know, off the video. Because I think sometimes video is very one-sided. Like I'm talking, my guest is talking, but we don't get to really interact. Um, I got quite a few uh, good audience who are actually giving me ideas uh, constantly. Hey, Felix, you should do this, you should do that. So 
I would love to have more of you to to be in the group. And you know, I'm I'm pretty sure we can spin off some nice ideas, collaborations together. The more ideas, the the, the better. All right. Sure. So we are going to have more beerly goalies coming up in the next couple of weeks uh, to kind of close off the theme of the stories behind the go camp. So thank you once again, Mike. I really, really enjoy the chat that we had here and you know all the all the things that you're showing us like that that to me is very unique to you so definitely continue to embrace that continue to show more of who you are and you know i think everybody can shine just being who they are so i appreciate it i'll i'll see everybody on the next next week's show and uh yeah i'll, I'll see you guys next week <laughs>